Hi everybody, welcome to my studio. It's Laura Sinadella here today. And it's going to be an introduction to drawing and painting with oils. Welcome. Um, this is last week's painting that I did. This is Open Studio Saturday. It's free. I'm glad you're here. I'm excited. We're going to paint today. Those paintings will be available for purchase on uh, artistlaurasenadella.com. If you're interested, later on you can check that out. So today, I want to welcome you to my garden. This is my bicycle in the garden, and today we're going to call it our garden bicycle. I know that's um, pretty simple, but um, we're going to try to keep this as simple as possible, and I want to show you some drawing techniques that I've picked up with my oil painting. And um, I'm going to welcome you into my studio. I'll explain these things to you. Um, if my volume gets down, you can ask me to repeat things. I'd be welcome to do that. I'm going to um, try to show you as close as possible, but you might have to later on email me, which you can. You can reach me at artistlaurasenadella at gmail.com. And again, you can check out my website at artistlaurasenadella.com. So, um, today we're going to do an introduction to drawing and painting with oils. Now, I normally would introduce to you some techniques. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's a one inch graph on acetate printed on a computer. I have a ruler here. This one here was um, donated by the Brookfield Fire Department. It's pretty cool, it's a multi tool. And I have just a regular metal ruler on the other side is cork. So those are some of the drawing tools that we would use along with, say, a pencil, maybe a composition finder, some masking tape and a graph. That's my eye. Yeah, so I painted my eye before. Um, pretty cool. Eyes are very complex. It's the uh, center of the soul. But today I'm going to show you my brushes and how I draw with my brushes. I, um, I'm going to simplify this painting as much as possible, but I do recommend um, more than one two-hour session to learn how to draw and paint. Um, it t probably took me about maybe 10, 15 years to get a value grade, and then I swear that it's been 20 more years trying to perfect it. One of the things that people always have a fear of here is greens. I remember when I was painting this, I had all kinds of comments. I painted this out loud on Facebook um, last year, two years ago, and um, I paint my garden all the time live if I can just for a minute and I let people see a glimpse of my garden. So today here you guys are lucky you're going to get two hours of looking at my garden or you can check it out on the Facebook page later. So I worked on this gray scale which is one way of determining all these greens but you have to know how to make the colors. I don't know, you can't see that very clearly. You can move this over. I have my um, double laptops today going so I can see the screen and what you can see and can't see. So I had um, some copies made. I think that these are exactly 8 by 10s to equal one half of my 16 by 20 board. I have a 16 by 20 birch board here. It's a really nice piece. It's got like a one inch wooden frame to it and the birch is um, attached. I put two layers of gesso on here and I sanded it and I kind of wish I had time to do a third but it two layers is really nice because it was a nice black primed canvas board um, birch board so here's my 8x10 um, I had printed and uh, over here I have a 16x20 it's exactly half and I don't know how clear you can see it, but you don't really need to see it clearly because I'm going to describe what's going on here. So today's class, I'm going to try to simplify this painting for you so that you can understand how I look at things and how I begin to draw them with a paintbrush. 
not necessarily with all these tools that I would teach you. You know, um, this is, you would say, like an 8 by 10, 1 inch graph, I would say, to graph out your 8 by 10 and your 16 by 20 and use that as your references. And I think it would take probably about four to six weeks to complete something like that, two, three hours a week, um, if you were to take a class. And then I went to it having it done in black and white so we can see it, the gray scales. We want to look at our um, gray scale and our values really um, good here because this looks intimidating to you. Um, drawing a bicycle is intimidating. It's a real challenge. I'm not going to say that today you'll be able to draw this bicycle, but I'm going to give you some ideas that are going to help you in your painting endeavors. Um, I always learn something from somebody when I take a workshop or I do painting alongside. Painting alongside artists is a great thing. Um, we do that with the Art Association of Blanca. I have my tools on a table over here, so I'm going to turn my back to you from time to time, and you can just look at the pictures. I'm going to um, begin to explain what I'm doing. Again, this is going to be called Garden Bicycle. It's actually one of my gardens in the backyard. I put the bicycle down, and then I put plants all around it, and I sit there and I paint when I can't go anywhere, like now. So... Here we are. I'm going to work from this. I'm going to use my paint brushes as a pointer to help you see this. But over here on my gray, black and white copy, 8 by 10, to equal half of my 16 by 20, which is the size of my birch board here with a one inch frame on it. This is, um, you could wire this and you could sell it just as it is. Make sure you always paint the edges. So, um, black is good because then you can put it in a show, you know, and it looks really sharp. So, that's just a recommendation. I mean, people do what they do. So, I'm going to begin to look at this. I only have a short amount of time to finish this. And a lot of times I'm going to put my back to you, but I'm going to make sure that I stand back enough so that the camera will focus and you can see what I've done or will do. So, I was, um... I'm going to let you know that um, here I see a circle, sort of more of an oval-like shape. Can you see that? In this bush here, there's sort of an oval shape here. So I'm going to say that that's an oval shape. Maybe I'll get a piece of uh, sketch paper so I can show you my drawing clearer than that image. Sorry about that. My back is to you right now. And you can hear everything. There's no music. So, I just, uh, Picked up some paper here. I'm going to pick this up here. Keep it right over my colored copy. Maybe we can turn down the music just a little bit. Okay, so normally I go right into the painting, and I'm going to do that after I show you how to simplify something like this bicycle here. We'll call it garden bicycle. I'm going to say that I see an oval shape here, right before the shadows in here. It gets real dark in here. And there's like a little hole. We can imagine that's like a little rabbit hole. It's kind of high up there, though. Maybe it's a bird's nest. That's what it is. It's a bird's nest. 
So you can make this whatever you want to make this. I'm not saying that you're going to be able to paint this the way I would paint this. You might not even have the same style that I would have. So I'm going to decide that here is sort of a medium color. It's green. Lots of greens in here. So we're just going to work through the greens a little bit at a time. We're going to start there. And I want to simplify this drawing. So I'm going to say that there's a line here at the bottom. And then I want to make all this grass. You see, this is the little grass at the bottom here. And then my bicycle. Everyone seems to think that the bicycle like needs to sit like flat on the ground. But what this does is slightly come up a bit. Just a little bit on the front bicycle. If this were our horizon line, I would say that this wheel just goes just below it. And this wheel goes just above it. So there's just a real slight tilt. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of a note there that that's an angle I want to look for. And that's what's going to give my painting something. So now I can, I can go back and I can use one of those little tools that I was showing you earlier, my composition. I can stand back from it and decide what do I really actually want to have in the painting. No, there it is. So I actually like all that you see in the painting because I have this image that I cropped because I liked it. I like how these leaves come down, they kind of like cup over. I don't know if you can see that there. So I want to decide like, oh wow, that's kind of large, right? So I can bring this down a bit. It's my painting, so I can do what I want. This paper is going to be a little bit off from the 16 by 22, by the way. This is a um, sketchbook watercolor. Oh, I don't know. I think it's a watercolor, probably 13 by 17. So now I've got my, my little leaf composition here. There's actually a fence that runs in between here. And this is like ivy that grows over the fence. But at this angle, you can't really see the fence. It would run along here. So as an artist, I can decide to put in the fence that I know that is there, or do I put it in... There's a little bit of the fence there. You can see it on the black and white, which I will post these images later on my um, Facebook page for your viewing. So I can decide whether I want to put that fence in there or not, but just I'm going to throw it in there for scale so I can decide where I want to put the bicycle and how high. I know for a fact that the bicycle is not as high as the fence. It's at least handlebar height that high. And then that would make the flowers, you know, come more over. So these are like basic shapes. If you were to sit here and to draw basic shapes. You'll be able to understand your image. It's more, your image needs to be correct. And your, your, feel, your painting has to have a feeling, it has to have a mood that comes across. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take a lot of drawing in a painting. Here, all I have is a bicycle. Now, if I didn't do the bicycle right, for instance, if I just decided that I wanted a wheel here, a wheel here, you know, um, I'm going to put a, a line here going up to the bar. I'll put one going down here, over to here, and then I need one of those metal bars in here for the seat, which is here. And I'm just trying to draw it as crazy as possible. I mean, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. There's nothing like perfect. I mean, if I doodled on this even, it's going to come out beautiful because I have the idea of what I'm working on. And my painting has emotion and a story that it's going to tell. 
you know, um, drawing is really important, but it's not, it doesn't have to be exact. You just want to make sure that you're getting your point across and you're telling your story. I mean, it's as simple as that. That's not like uh, crazy, um, you know, um, I spent all day on this kind of drawing. It's a five minute sketch, if that. I can decide where I want the ground to be, where I want the bush to go, where I want the tree to go, you know, how many branches do I want to have coming out of the tree, I want to have the leaves, you know, coming over, I want to have the leaves coming over here, and I'm done. I mean, that's basically it. Um, that's, like, if I were sitting somewhere and I decided, oh, wow, look at that library, it has a bicycle leaning up against it or here it's in my garden, I can, you know, quickly sketch it for you, put it in my um, book, and then later on I can draw it. Now, sometimes my sketches, they become more elaborate. Um, I might be, for instance, one time I was sitting in um, Hopedale, and I was waiting for something, and uh, all of a sudden I took out my paints and I started doodling and before I knew it four hours had gone by and I did a painting and um, I do that a lot it takes me four to six hours to get a painting done that I think is good so here I want to decide on my painting I thought I I would throw in a little more detail because I had more time for instance if I decided I wanted to get some texture in there and show what the bark was like because when I get home I might not remember that this is a you know a oak or maple or birch or pine or you know tree I could put little details in here that would help me later on I could remember that you know there's a whole bunch of leaves that are around here you know there's some shadows maybe in the grass and uh, I could keep going um, you know eventually I could end up with a finished piece, but at some point I gotta say, oh, that's it, that's enough of the sketch. You know, I'm moving on. So, I don't even do this far anymore, but this is good for beginners, you know, look for the basic shapes and doodle, doodle, doodle. You know, um, I used to doodle every single day. Now I paint every day. Same thing. Or to take pictures. It's very creative to take pictures. So we're looking at this here now, and I want to begin the painting. I have some examples I told you, so I can later on, I can look at this bicycle for details. I can pick up this 8x10. I'll put this aside. Then I want to put my grayscale over here and begin my painting. My painting is a drawing first, and then the color. I have several brushes that I like to start with. Larger is better. I've chosen two palette knives for today. I have a T29 and one I got from the Artist Loft. And I'm going to start with a Filbert, number four. Get my palette out. I'll explain as I go with my palette. Now remember, this is my drawing. We're still drawing. We're going to keep those other drawings that we have here so as references, but we're going to begin our drawing with paint. I'm going to use a blue, a red, a light yellow. I think it's a lemon yellow. Uh, yellow ochre, artist white, titanium white, maybe some white zinc. I'm going to pick out uh, Persian blue and another I'm going to use a medium. For my medium I'm going to use medium
I have my impasto medium. I'm going to begin with that on my palette. I'm going to show you eventually what my palette looks like so you guys can see. This is an intro to almost all that I do. We can do the same exact thing with um, acrylics. I have a medium that I like. I'm going to use the impasto gel. Use about a thumb size of lemon yellow. Yellow ochre. I'm going to use a uh, fall red. I need a uh, all red. This painting, I'm not using the basic colors. I'm adding a cool and a warm of each color. So I'm going to use a Brazilian crimson. I'm going to use a ultramarine blue. Again, I'll show you my palette when I'm done putting all the paint on it. I'll lift it up so you can see it. And then we'll make the palette right on the board so you can follow along. How's it going for everyone? Anyone painting? There are messages. Nope. It's a beautiful Saturday. In Brookfield. Okay, so I set up my tools and I'm ready to go. I'm slowly gonna put it on. Here we go. Let's see how clear we can get this for you. And Use now. Your sexual paint later. It's awesome, Lisa. I can't wait to see it. Okay, so the beginning of this painting is um, a little bit darker. I um, have some walnut oil, some mineral spirits, and I already told you about the gel. I'm going to put my back to you, but I'm going to make sure that at times I turn around so that you can see me clearly. I'll lower my palette and I'll raise my palette so that you can see the colors. Well, I'm going to work right here on the board anyway. so. I decided earlier when I was doing my sketch that I was going to make this a really dark little hole. They said maybe a bird's nest. I'm mixing the mineral spirits in with my paint as I go. I'm using some of the blue, the red, and the yellow ochre. And then I'm going to come back and pick up some more of the blue. My paint's really wet, so. And I'm moving around fast. Okay, you you got to learn the um, balance and the liquid, the thinner. If you were using acrylics, you would consider this to be water. And you would start with a real thin, dark color. In watercolors, you use light colors first and you get darker. And oil and acrylics, you go dark into light. So I know that this whole area in here is really dark. I'm just gonna get some underpainting down. And again, I just added some more blue to my dark brown that I had going on to make it more of a black. But I wanted to do it in layers. Oil painting is about layering. I'm following the shapes in here. I see this little shape here. I don't know if you guys can see it. It almost looks like a little duck. See the duck in here? And the leaves? If I back up here, you might be able to see it here. It looks like the shape of maybe we'll say like a little duck. So I'll throw that dark color in down in here. 
It looks to me like we'll say maybe a shepherd's ears. I'm putting the shepherd's ears over here. And I'm doing it with a dark color, almost a black, but it's not. It's a dark, dark brown with blue in it. And I, I'm jumping up to here now because I know that there's a line in here. I don't know if you can see it better on the gray. But there's a line in here. And then I have a tree that comes down here. And I have some space over in here. So I have to account for my space. And I see almost like a triangular space here. It goes down for the tree. So this would be my tree space in here. I can almost, you know, brush on some light blackish brownish color for my bark. I know it's a tree, and now I can see there's a tree here. There's a, a branch right there. I better grab that while I still see it, right? I mean, I might like move on to something else and forget where I was, but here it is. That's that branch I'm looking at. I'm using yellow ochre with my blue and I'm blending it in using the slightest bit of the walnut oil and mixed with mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits. And I'm painting very thin, it's like a stain, like if I were staining furniture or whatever, it would be really thin because it'll dry really fast, it'll dry to the touch really fast so that I can add more pigment to it. But you can start to see that like it's beginning to look like a painting already and um, I don't really have too much up there so we better get going. We need another branch up over in here I see. So I need more of that dark color. Let me show you and make it over here for you. do it right here. So we have a little bit of the blue, the red, and the yellow ochre. I have a hard time with that because I still have paint on my brush. So I'll just paint it thicker. Right, so then if I take all of those colors together and mix them, I get this darker brown, which I consider to be my black. This is this color here. So I'm going to fill in my tree now. I need to use some more thinner. I'm starting to drag. I'll move that over in here. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but this is my jar. Isn't this palette great? It's big enough to become a table for me. So this is my jar. It's full of mineral spirits on the bottom and in this little shot glass bottle thing. I have mineral spirits on one side and walnut oil on the other and I can apply it to my palette thin and make my colors. And that's why I'm going to put this down here on my palette. So. Fill in my tree a little bit. I want to stain my whole canvas eventually because that's the trick to getting this on here quickly. But I'm drawing right now, so I want to make sure that I have time to get my ideas down. I have to get my ideas down before we get, you know, too far ahead. What if we had to leave or something, you know? I, I'm looking at the picture right now and I see that the tire just slightly goes over the tree. And it's just a circle. I don't know. You can use things. You can trace things to get a circle. You don't have to um, have your circle perfect. A lot of people say, well, I, don't, I can't draw. I can't draw. Well, I can keep drawing and drawing and drawing until I get it right. 
I like to do that anyway. Like I just bring my paintbrush around and around and around until I get the right size circle that I want, which I think I just got. I have to remember that there's grass down in here and there are areas where it's darker than others. I might want to just lighten the area with some of the walnut oil and thin mineral spirits. See, it's very thin stain I'm making. Similar to what you would use on your furniture. And, uh, this is painting on wood. It kind of reminds me of painting furniture. I do portraits on furniture, too. So I'm thinking that that's good enough to start with my bicycle, my circle. Um, again, you can trace things that are that size. For instance, that's perfect. Masking tape, perfect size. I'm gonna kind of blow up this bicycle a little bit because I want it to be more of a center of attraction than this bush. I don't know if you see this over in here, but I'm gonna um, probably outline it in white for you to see, but this bush here seems to be taking over where my bicycle should be. See that? I don't know if you can see it here, but you can definitely see it over in here. This is overshadowing my bicycle. So I'm going to kind of blow it up a little bit, but not too much that it will distort what I'm trying to show you. So I know that the wheel is here, that the tree stops here, and then we have bushes, 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 and this is where the dark hole is. And then it kind of comes down, like it's like a little hill here. There's like a little hill here. I think that should be a little bit lighter. I just pick up some yellow ochre and red. I already know that that's the color that's going to go there because this whole area is kind of like a moon shape. See that? There's a little moon shape there of uh, probably dirt, mulch, might be mulch, leftover mulch. This is before the beautiful flowers. I did uh, take it with the yellow though, so it'll just be enough to accent it. Because again, our subject is the bicycle. We're going to call this the garden bicycle. So I know already, so looking at this, I'm, I'm thinking that my tan is too tan. I'm just going to add a little bit more red to it. Once you learn your colors, you can go from color to color. I don't use too many colors most of the time. I do love colors, though. I mean, that's the basis of everything that grabs me. But I learned to make a lot of colors from standard colors that I have. So I already know that that's where the dirt is and that there's going to be grass around there, but I've stained this area, you know, thin layers. I'm going to paint this in, I don't know how many layers, but we're just going to keep painting this. Now we need to determine where this tire is going to go. I'm going to say that if I took my brush, this is another drawing technique, and take my brush and I'm going to decide how big it is bring it over into here and I'm going to tell you that that where the tire should go. Now I told you I was making it slightly bigger so I might want to just give it a little bit of a space like maybe an eighth of an inch or a, there you go. My tires are going to be about the same. I would say, like, it's important to have your tires be about the same. So if I were to measure them with my paintbrush, I would be able to say that they're about the same. But remember, I told you that you could use the tape. You can put the tape on there, and boom, there you go. It's about the same. Now, I was telling you earlier about basic shapes. We can go back to drawing again. 
It's really important to practice your shape so that you can see the world differently. I say that to all my students, I think that um, it's sort of childlike to begin like this. I believe in it. I think that you can train your eye to repetitively see things that you ask it to see. We've already used that paper, so we will just put another one here. Use my Okay, so while well, I'm letting that sort of dry or sink in, should I say, because it's not going to dry for centuries, they say. Could take up to two centuries to dry or something, but um, here on this paper now I can draw shapes. If you continuously repeat these shapes over and over, and over again, you will begin to see things differently, I promise you. You take these shapes and you make them 3D, and you practice. Somebody's asking two centuries to dry? Yeah, technically. But you can um, force the drying time, or you can push the drying time by touch, but technically, it's not dry for centuries. So if I begin to watch things that are shaped like this, I begin to see the world differently. I tell all my students to practice, practice, practice. It sounds ridiculous, but it is the truth. I see things in three dimensions. I see things in different shapes and colors. I see things in my sleep. I can meditate. Because I'm focused. I focus on things. Because I was taught how to see things. So if you practice these things, you can continue to see things differently. You can imagine. I don't know what colors are better for you. But you can begin to imagine these shapes when you see things. You know, I know that they say that, you know, you're square, you're not really square, but you do have squares on your shapes. But there's shapes, basic shapes and everything, so yeah, it sounds ridiculous, but like doodle like that and you'll see things differently. So when I'm looking at my painting, I'm going back to my painting now, when I'm looking at my painting, I'm going to begin to look for shapes. Like in here, I'm going for this, um, bar needs to go in here from the bicycle uh, seat here and there there's there's sort of a triangular shape there between the bicycle and the bar and the bar seems to be on an angle so um, I have no idea so in here I see shapes I'm gonna begin to put in my shapes and I'm going to need lighter colors at times so I might introduce a little bit of the white to the dark color that I'm using just to lighten the area a little bit. We're working with metallics in here. See there's a triangular shape in here between the two of them and this is where that other triangular shape begins. And it takes a lot of practice to see things like this. But if you think in triangular shapes here, it's easy to draw. It's not as threatening as you think it is. You've got to practice, practice, practice. Remember, I said practice, practice, practice. So in here now, I need to go a little bit lighter. So you can see my lines. So that's my fender. And now I talked about there was a triangular shape between this bar and the middle of this bicycle tire. See, this is just nothing more than a, 
a rounded triangle shape right here. I'll go real light so you can see it now. And remember, we determined how far away this was by just using our paintbrush. We didn't need any real fancy tools to do something like that. You can use a regular ruler. If I was to take a ruler, I could say, well, the tires are about three inches um, wide. And that tire is about three inches wide. You know, um, this tire is about three inches tall. This tire is about three and a quarter inch tall, you know? So um, you can measure, but I like to do things by eye. I'm giving you my interpretation. Not necessarily is it right on the money, but it's pretty close. Practice, and practice. So I got a triangle in there. Now I'm looking at this shape here and I'm saying, wow, look, that's a triangle with a circle. What do I mean by that? There is a triangle here. See the triangle? And then there's a circle here. You might need to lighten that a bit so that you can see that. But we're working with metallics anyway, so. I'm painting with really thin paint. It's almost like house stain at the moment. It's uh, oil paint. Oh, it has like a little fender at the edge of the triangle, right? And it comes over the wheel, just like that. See, it's not a big turn. It's just a little bit of a dip in there. I can um, probably move the camera a little bit closer that, so that you can see that. But I have a lot going on there right now, and uh, it's just finding shapes. I'm going to go on to my next shape. I'm plugging in the cord here. All right. So I'm going to go on to the next shape. I got a triangle here. I'm going to try to lighten that up so you can really see it. Maybe give it a little bit of pop of yellow. space for the dark color in there. Then underneath it, we have this wheel here. So there, there. Now I see another triangle just above it. Can you see that over there? Let's see if I get a different color pointer. I bet that'll make a difference. You could use a big fat paintbrush. There we go. So if we come over to this picture here, just above the fender is another triangle over to the handlebars. See that right there? It's another triangle, but it's on a funny angle. So again, I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to get that angle that I'm looking for and I'm going to just slide my hand across the canvas using that same angle. Slide my hand across the canvas. Now I don't have to stay with that like right away. I could do it a couple of times so that I make sure that I have it right. Because that's kind of a scary looking angle there. So I'm going to, boom that in there. Now I have that top bar that I want to make sure that I come in on the triangular side. It's just up a little bit over. See? There's the triangle. It's just like the other triangles, but there's a bend and stuff in it, so we'll work on that later. There's a dip. It dips down. It dips down a bit. Up here, it, it dips up a bit. 
and over there. Now we have a space in between, I can pick up the dark color that I have for that. <coughs> Fill in that area here, so you can see. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm also filling in the bark at this moment with the same color. Because I can go up here with it too. It's about layering. I use the same color and I can move it around in the board a little bit at a time. Then like stain like furniture. Stain in the canvas. <coughs> right Remember to get your edges. So as I, I'm using the colors, every time I have leftover paint on my brush, I can use it and move it around for the dark colors because it's just a mix of all the colors that I've been using. So there's no excess. I'm moving it around. Somewhere in the sky, not in this picture, but you know, somewhere in the sky, there's some whitish blue color. So I'm going to throw some of that up in the sky area, just so I know. While we're here staining, I want to finish my painting from the top down now. Make sure I can get all these colors on there rather quickly so they'll be dry enough for me to adhere. I have enough of the bicycle now that I know where it is. I have some time to throw in some sky. So all the sky is is blue, and if you know anything about mixing colors, blue and yellow is green. So putting blue on the sky first is not causing any damage to the composition. It's just putting some stain on the canvas, you know, because we're staining it so the next layer adheres. So sometimes... Um, Music in the background helps because the scratching can get to be tedious. And you have to make sure when you're doing this you're using proper ventilation. Some people wear masks and gloves. I try not to touch the paint as much as possible. So I said I was going to do some of the sky, but I just ended up picking up some of the blue and mixing it up everywhere else. So I'm going to take some of my dark colors since I know that this area of the woods it's sort of dark. It's on a gray, dark blue area. There's more pines in this area here. If I back up, I can stand away from my piece and look at it, and it helps me to get proper perspective. If I sit too long on top of the painting, I start to see the painting as not three-dimensional anymore. It's important to get back from the painting. So right now, I drew on an awful lot of that painting. It doesn't seem like it, but it is. There's a lot going on here. Some people like the scratching. It reminds them of the ocean, they thought. Uh. So it reminds people of the ocean. Sometimes it does me too. I get so involved in it. It's almost meditative. I'm standing back now from the piece, and I notice that the hill comes up to about here on the tree. And I can start to put in some of that color here. It goes a couple of steps behind the tire. Putting these different colors that I have on my palette are going to begin to make uh, depth in the piece. This is underpainting. These are the farthest colors that you have in your painting. And you're going to build up onto it. It's like layering. So we know that this little hill thing comes back up in here. So my paint is drying. I'm not able to steal it. I don't know if you noticed, but I've been stealing the paint from some areas and moving it around the canvas. It's starting to dry, so we're getting 
able to paint more. I talk a lot. Um, I can explain to you more in the drying process, but um, you can look that up online. There's a lot of different mediums. It's not important what you use. I've used hardware store products and I've used fine art products. And um, it doesn't matter what you use, oils or acrylics. Watercolors won't have the same effect. It would take you more layers. Probably not worth the time, but sometimes we paint for different reasons. Not always for time and money. So I know behind the bicycle I need to somehow have a definition between the bicycle and the tire. I'm going to use some of my red, blue, yellow ochre. Fill in some back of this woods. It's very blue back there. I might want to change to my Persian blue for this. It's good to um, have at least two different blues when you're doing a landscape, um, a very green landscape, because you want to be able to create more greens. So behind my bicycle tire is very dark. It's very dark between the bicycle and the tree. So I'm going to use some of my browns with some of that Persian blue to make it really dark. This will help me be able to see the parts of my bicycle. Spread my paint around to make it really thin. Remember I told you it's like staining furniture. I need to get something behind this. Now we have a tree behind here and we know that and it's kind of light. So I'll, here I'm going to break one of the little rolls and just use the slightest bit of titanium white in here. Light in this area. With some yellow ochre. I'm not married to these colors. I'm going to move around layer by layer, but this is my underpainting. I want to be able to see my design, which is my drawing. At the same time, I want to give it some depth. I'm going to layer it. Moving my paint around from the side to side, you got to make sure you go top to bottom too. I had an artist friend that always said to me, Laura, you need to do top to bottom. Top to bottom, top to bottom. So I'm doing top and the bottom and the top and the bottom. Take some of the same color that you have on the bottom and bring it into the top. It doesn't mean that you're going to have that color totally up there, but you'll have that as a back lit color. Okay. We can always use this for a darker sky leaf darker leaves. So I need some more blue in that. And I need to move it from top to bottom again. Top to bottom. I don't have enough of that darker blue down here. I don't want to get too dark near my bicycle tire because I know that I need to see that right now. But that tree certainly has bark. Dark bark. So I'm going to use some dark. But maybe I won't go totally into the ground. But I'm definitely going to put some sort of difference between here and here. There's a lot of really dark darks behind this tree and the birch trees. So I'm going to use some Persian and some yellow ochre. And I'm going to switch now to the um, impasto gel. 
I'm going to make my really dark, dark pine green. This is my pine green. It's yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, and some of the gel. I'm using a gel medium because I like the strokes. Less scratching. I get a nice smooth brush, number four. Colbert. And I see another triangular shape here. I don't know if you see it right above the bushes. I'm going to throw that color in there now. See my triangle? Maybe you need it to have a little bit of a highlight so you can see it better. There's another triangle. Isn't that exciting? That's another triangle. See that? Now I can fill it all in. Maybe a little more yellow ochre with some of the gel. It's scratching. I want it to be nice and smooth. I'm painting on birch for a reason because it's nice and smooth, but um, I'm going to make this very thick, this painting. But I like to start off like this. It's sort of meditative. I'm becoming one with my painting. You know, um, layers. I told you it's really important to get layers. This is how I get my drawing down. I'm going thin. So every time I hit it, I might be able to hit a mistake that I had or even another thought because... Sometimes I'm very fickle and I might like start this direction and then I move that direction because I see something when I stand back from the drawing, which is really important that I'm going to do that now. Okay, so I have this right here. I'm going to fill this in and come back. Over here, there's got to be another triangle shape. Oh, it's square like here, but then there's like another triangular shape right off of this bush. It goes down below the bike. Do you see that? So I'm painting right here now. This other triangular shape. I'm gonna thin it out with the thinner again. You can use any thinner. I like prefer the mineral spirits because of the odorless, which is not 100% odorless, but odorless as much as possible. So now I have another triangular shape that I found. I'm going to fill that in. Okay, it's right here. Maybe you need to see it brighter. It's here. Okay. I'm going to fill in this triangular shape. It's a little bit lighter here too. So adding a little bit of lemon yellow to this didn't make a big difference. It's pretty much the scale that we need the value. We're looking for um, our values, our edges, our shapes. So I'm just working in the background right now in my thin layer of paint. Remember I talked about this area here. We're right on it now. We need to fill this in. I'm going to fill this in all here with uh, another shade of green. I'll pick up some of the blue with the lemon yellow and a little bit of red this time. The closer you are, the warmer it gets. So this part of my painting here would be warmer it's very cool now see how cold see how cold that green is that should be my farthest green which would be over in here remember whatever is over here i can take and put it over here balance this balances my paintings just to have a little bit of that color up in here and down in here which, you know, turned into be another triangular shape. So basically I've been painting this whole painting using triangular shapes. It's, you could probably paint it with squares, you could probably paint it with circles, but I'm getting my outline. And then I'm gonna take a few minutes for a break. You guys can get up, stretch, walk around, get something to eat. 
Come on back, share with me a little, ask me questions. I'll be here to answer them. I'm painting this as thin as I can. I'm gonna switch to a bigger brush right now so I can apply my stain rather fast. When I'm done with the staining process, I'm gonna take a few minutes for a break, go get something to eat, drink, go to the bathroom. I don't know, whatever you want to do, and uh, come on back, ask me questions, I'm open. I've been doing this for a long time, I don't always do things the way other people do them, but I'm more than welcome to share it with you. I'm staining the background now, so that when I come back I can adhere the next layer. I say adhere because technically it doesn't really dry. It takes about a year before you can seal it. If you were to use a varnish on the painting, you should wait about a year unless you use a varnish medium during the painting process. So I switched to a larger brush, as you probably see, and I'm sort of blending it in so that there's no like areas of canvas, board, birch board, I'm gonna be. We're at 2 o'clock. So I'm just about at 2 o'clock. I'm going to take a break. I'll be right back. Guys, you can take a look at this. And we'll try to pull it together when I come back. Remember, ask any questions. I'm willing to share with you what I know. Happy day.
nice though. I'm gonna open up the door a little bit. Turn it down for a little bit. You guys let me know if the fan gets too loud, okay? For in here. So I wasn't expecting to like really be in the studio on a regular basis. I was painting out, but now I'm back in the studio and I'm going to begin to work on this video again. I'm going to add in some more blues in the here. I'm bringing this um, blob here that I have opposite the bicycle that Lisa was just discussing. I'm going to move my paint around. This way I can test it too. I know that it gets dark all the way up and in here. See here? All this dark. Okay. I turned on the fan. And Claudia's going to come in and turn it on. Just to get the air out of here. It's kind of hot. I'm getting air conditioning. Like I said, you know, Rome wasn't built in a you know, one brick at a time. So I'm rising my um, back color of sort of a black color, and I notice that my bush sort of is rounded off here. And there's some fir trees up in here. I think it's like a fir pine. So I'm going to lighten that right now because I already see my shapes. Throw in some of the lemon yellow. And if I s scratch at this with my brush, I'm still using the same brush. It's a good idea to change your brushes from time to time. I'll change in a second. But I want to get this color on here. Um, this fur color is just a little bit of the ultramarine with some of the lemon yellow. Maybe a little bit of the red. Very little of the red. The red is very strong and it hardly ever use any red. I wish I knew that. I would have saved a lot of money on the tubes. It's a very dominant color, so um, I have this fur-like color in here, so it's very light. But this is my background, so maybe a little more blue. Yeah, there it is. Sometimes it takes a while to find the color, but there's my fur color. If I scrape at this, the negative on the board from the white starting to create some sort of a pine effect. It's like impasto, sculpting. The gel gives me some time and some weight to the paint where I can move it around and create shapes. This is underpainting though, remember, so there'll be more paint over it. I'm gonna dab my brush across the top of these leaves here to show a real definition line between the dark shadow in the middle. I'm just going to tap my brush right over the blue that's there and the blue will give me a lighter color. See? Because it's already dry, the blue underneath, because I just did a real thin staining of the blue. Sometimes they say wipe off the paint, put the paint on and then dab it with a towel or a face cloth or a rag or a t-shirt or anything that you're using. I know that paper towels and such are hard to find these days. You can use old clothing, cut it up into little rags, but make sure you throw it away. Don't ever hang on to your rags. Throw them right in the trash when you're done with them. Safety. Google that. So, I have a lighter area here now, I know. I um, sort of pounced it on. Um, I'm going to come over to this side because it comes down the same over in here. Except it's really dark over here. So I might leave the space for the darkness. It's important to have ventilation when you're doing this. It got really hot in here and I had to get all the doors and windows open. It's a beautiful day out. So uh, it gave me a chance to wash my hands. I um, wash my hands so much now I have to probably be careful of that, start moisturizing them. 
It's one of the things with paint, um, I didn't realize uh, it's a hazard. You can wash your hands so many times. Most people wear gloves. And here it's very dark. I'm just adding some blue over the brown that I have there. It's sort of like a dark brown. I took a little bit of the, the blue and some more of the gel and I'm layering it again. It's warmer up front would be more red. Out back would be more blue. So in this area here, the hole is a lot closer to me. I need to have it warmer. I'm just going to add some more red to my color. More of a cranberry light color. Yeah. And it goes up here darker. But now it's more blue darker. So I just add some blue to my brown. And again, this is a thin layer mixed with a little bit of the gel. It's kind of thin. You can see I can subtract it by hitting the brush. And I left this area really light for a reason because the leaves are really light. You can see almost my textures are the tip of the brush hitting the board. It has a little thump thump to it. So maybe it was good that that um, incident happened with the air. I lost my air in here. So I had to get the windows open and the whatever. I have a big bay window and the sun was shining in here. There's a definition of darkness in between this bush and that bush. This is where that birch is. Someone said that your um, comment, leave a space for the darkness, that sounds like a song lyric. Maybe it is. We just did poetry to art. Maybe we'll do music to painting. But yeah, so my pines are more of a sappy light green, which is more bluish. Even lighter. I could go lighter, pick up some of the white, and go light. There's a whole area here of real light. Colors. Okay, so now I'm going to scatter some of that. Remember, I'm moving it around so it dries fast. Scatter some of this light. This will show me the diff different areas. I'm sort of marking my lines. But I'm also checking dryness. I pretty much know where. I want the colors to go from looking at it, but I gotta remember I gotta stand back from the piece at times. And here now we're ignoring this section over here. We need to give it some, show it some love. So over here I can just kind of roll my brush in because I got all the colors that I got from over in here, and I can spread them over in here. So nothing really goes to waste, and I don't want to use a lot of paint. I want to start really thin. I mean, really thin, like furniture staying thin. I throw in some of these pines. I see some highlight in here. Sort of like a rectangular space. I take some of that brighter lemony yellow and put it down in here. I'm pouncing my brush. I told you I was going to change brushes. I probably should. But this one seems to be working for me at the moment. You inadvertently have, it appears that you've made a black cat sitting there looking into the forest. Oh, well, that's Somebody beautiful. picked up on that. It looks very pretty. It's, it's very mysterious. I like it a lot. So I'm turning my brush in different directions to get different textures and I'm pulling out some of the whites that are below to give my painting some light on the leaves. 
And I, I want to make sure that I can get some of these leaves and go over this dark area. So I'm just going to come at it with some lighter yellow. This is why I switched to adding a yellow that is more of a lemony yellow. I say lemony because I can't give you the exact color. It's a lighter yellow. I'm just slightly tapping the canvas or the board with the tip of the brush, turning it to make different shapes. <clears throat> See, it's just the tip of the brush. And I'll do it really fast and cover areas so we don't take forever. I know that it's lighter and darker in here. I want to leave some of the color that I started with, the light color, but I don't want to leave too much of it. I'm just leaving a hint of it because whatever is here is here, whatever is there is there, whatever here is here. But I don't want to show too much of it. I just want to show a hint. I know that it gets really light going down in here. We probably won't be able to finish this today, but I would love to... Um, continue to work on this with you. You're welcome to contact me. I have a painter's group and maybe we can Zoom it. I'd like to see what all of you are working on. I'd like to see your version of the painting when you're done. It's my interpretation. It's not necessarily the way it's supposed to be. It's the way it is. I don't always see things clearly. I mean, sometimes I can't even see, but that's how I interpret it. So this takes a really, um, a while to get to learn the technique that I'm using for the leaves right now, but basically I'm just using the very tip of my brush. I'm holding it like this. I'm using the tip of my brush to get these leaves on fast. I want to throw as many as I can on here with the darkest colors first into the lighter colors. So I'm using a very light stain to do this in layers, many layers. Someone asked me one time, well, how many layers? I don't know. Sometimes it depends on how long I stay with the painting. If I did it all in a day, it would be like six layers, eight layers. I don't know. Some areas have more layers than others. That's why it's important to use the same amount of medium in everything. So that when you add all the layers, they're not different from each other. So in this lighter area here, I don't know if you noticed, I had to go darker blue, green, to get over the black. But I will go lighter now, adding the lemon yellow because that's going to bring in some of the light that's down in here. But again, these are just my background. I'm not sure if we will get to the full painting today. I might be able to paint afterwards. If I do, I will post it so you guys get a chance to see it. There's a real dark square in here, almost a rectangular shape. I'll back up so you guys can see it again. This time I'm going to switch to using some more cranberry, bluish cranberry color. And I again, I'm painting everything using the gel medium. So in here, there's a sort of a square-like shape of darkness. And I added some of the cranberry red light. This is going to make it really dark in here. And I'm just going right over the green with my bluish cranberry color. And it has the gel in it. And I see the same thing going on over in here. So I'll throw a little bit there. You see the shape of this? It's got like an egg-like shape. We want to make sure we emphasize that with the darker colors when get a chance to go around. 
These are the farthest layers that I can see. I see there's a few trees, stems, back in here. That'll give that, the more layers you go back, the further you go back, the more depth you create and interest to your paintings. So there's some birch, there's some pines, but I'm going to leave the birch out because I can barely see them in the photos. I need to get some greens in here. Again, I'm only using very thin color because I'm using the background. I'm subtracting it almost from the board because I have a certain amount of spirit still on my brush. I can even come at it with a dry brush. This would be considered a dry brush. And I can pull off the paint and that would give it texture. But I don't need to do that right now. I um, can put in this lemony yellow. The more I get done now, while, for instance, if I were like out in the field, the more I can get done now, the better I'll be when I get back to the studio. You know, we're under quarantine now, so this is basically what I've been doing from the studio, but I would rather be out on site. Now I'm going to switch brushes. I know that that area is pretty light. I want to work on this lighted area here. I'm going to use a smaller brush to get that. Some blue, some of the red, and the yellow ochre. I'm going to make more of a black color. So it's kind of dark brown. I'm going to add more blue. Use this color here really dark. Okay, so I'm going to throw in a few branches in here because I know and I can see some that they have a ton of little branches in here too. I see some dark areas. Maybe some thin lines. This is my darkest dark area. I want to make sure I get those on there for you. Because I want to add some of my lightest light. Here I might not get a chance to go in order, if you, per se, order. I might have to just throw in what I can remember. Because, like I said, I'm only going to be doing this for about two hours, but I would want to spend at least four hours on a piece of this magnitude, if not six. So we'll see. Sometimes a painting just happens. Sometimes it might happen in 20 minutes. Sometimes it might happen in five. But most times it's hours for me. I'm kind of a slow painter. So I'm throwing in some of my darkest darks and that will define my areas. So when I come back later. There's a big knot here. Okay, switch brushes again. I think I'm going to go with a round now. I've created a blue area now that if I add just a little bit of red to it and some yellow. I think 
and add some of this bark area here. I want to make sure I get behind the bicycle before I do any more of the bicycle. I want to make sure that I don't um, lose my drawing lines, my sketch lines. But I know that there's some of that greenish bark color here. Sort of greenish yellow. And then it's really dark around it. So if I take the same paint and just add darker colors and keep blending it together here so I don't have any strong lines. It's sort of a triangular shape in here. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's starting to happen here. Another triangular shape. Okay, the yellow which color, the barkish color in the middle here. Sort of another triangular shape behind the bicycle seat here. There. I know there's some more of that color in here, but not too much. Sort of a purplish, brownish, blackish color here. We'll pick up some more red and blue. Okay, now it's getting really dark. The bark is uh, darker up in here. This branch kind of is out here. As I keep going, I don't know if you've noticed, but the colors sort of blend together, but some of them create their own new colors. I'm going very thin, spread it around. I want to um, get some of that grass in here before we get done today. I'm using the light yellow, or the blue and the red to get the grass in the front here because it's the warmest. I put a red under color here. If I slightly um, leave a little bit of that red in here, I'm leaving some contrast the red and the green, and it's showing an area. It's giving it a space. So this would be the warmest green. The coolest green would be a whitish, yellowish, ultramarine. And it would be almost teal green. That you'll find closer to this area, back in here. So. Them in there. There's leaves upon leaves upon leaves. Let's see how long we have to get these leaves out. But I can leave some of that blue there that will create some of that underpainting. We'll create some of those leaves. In here, <coughs> so that's the dog. Crystal must have heard somebody coming to the room. Shh. Shh. I sure am going So in here, I don't want to make mud. So I'm going to take some of the yellow with the white. I'm white in it. I'm going to do some highlights in here. I don't want to do too much because I'm just doing them in the fashion leaves. Not too much of the detail. That's why I'm not switching too many brushes. I don't want too much detail in this painting. I want to do the impression of it. This is about the practice. Practice, practice, practice. So when I take the paint from here, I can move the paint over in here, or I can move it in here. I can move it over here. There's nothing going on over here. We're going to put something in here. There's hardly any stain. 
You see, it's lighter. So I'll lighten it up over in here. More of the pine. But it's cooler in the back here. It's even lighter than light. It's almost white. But then there'll be leaves on top of that. Because this is the bottom layer. Layer after layer after layer. Okay. So I come back in here now and I can use some of this light here to show the fluffy little pines. The fluffy little pines. They are fluffy looking. But practice, practice, practice. You learn what tools do what and what you like best. What tools you like best. Try different tools, try different mediums. I like the glossy mediums or the semi gloss medium. I'm going to add some warmer greens for my leaves in here. A little bit of blue around the bicycle here to define the difference between the tire and the bush. And then we're going to go right over in this dark spot here with some leaves. And again, I'm going for another layer of yellows over in here so I can get some highlights in the sun. I can go back later on with my smaller brushes. For instance, we'll use this one here. find some of those little leaves, the shapes, and just randomly throw a few of them in here. And that will give you the idea of a bunch of leaves. Okay. They're just random little shapes in my lettering brush in the darkest of my darkest brown. And here I know that there's the furs. I can scrape away some of the paint and give it little furs, fluffy little furs for my pines using the dark color too. So technically I would say this is about a six hour painting. I mean, I'm going to put a couple of hours into it today, but we're just going to get the gist of it. I'm not going to be able to finish it. Like I said, I'd be happy to do it again with you if you want to do it with a Zoom or a Skype or a Facebook or a email or show me what you're working on. I'm willing to share with you what I know. better to paint with friends. It's great to have advice and learn something from everybody. You always learn. If you listen, you learn. Growing little branches. There's these little zigzaggy things. Those should come like at the very end. But if you want to scrape away some of the paint that's here, you might be able to get like a couple of the little branches. Depending on the size of your detail, you can use different brushes. If you don't put a lot of detail in there, you can use a larger brush if you put a lot of detail in it. 
for instance, if we were to paint each one of these leaves, you could paint it with a small brush and just randomly go around here, paint the little leaves on there. But depends on how much time you want to spend on something, too. I know that this would take me four to six hours. Because I do want some sort of detail in here. Not too much. I want to give you an impression of it, but... So I can throw in a few leaves. I'll give you the details. But I'm going to portray. And it takes a lot of practice to get leaves and layers. I'm doing a layering thing here. Lots of layering. So I'd really like to see what you're working on, and uh, if any of you want to paint something like this. I like to paint with people. Um, you're welcome to join my small painters group, or we could paint together on Zoom, or however you're... Like I said, if I have the time, I'd love to um, paint with friends. And now we do an in studio in the, in the uh, dining room. You don't have to have anything fancy. Just the cell phone will work. This one up in here. I like how it comes down and over and the one across from it. Mixing my paint with the paint that's still here because it's pliable. It is for a little while. It depends on how much painting you put in it though. This one comes over into the tree and it's bluer because it's further back. But I don't want it to be totally blue. I just want it to be bluer. So. This is an underpainting, so it will be lighter on top, but it's definitely bluer. Okay, now some yellow ochre and some more of the medium. And take a lot of this paint over here. So I'm 
fixing some more blues and some ochres. Just want to make sure I have areas of different color. So many blues, I gotta step back from it from time to time to make sure that I have the right perspective. So I can go down and up and down and up, down and up. Blue. Use the same paint here and move it around. And I do this too, I'm subtracting areas of paint in the birch and it creates a highlight. Okay. It's very relaxing to dot. I know a couple of artists lately that are working in dot. This is similar to that. They're little leaves, little dot leaves. I'm giving it a twist and a turn on my brush. It's a little leathered brush. It's um, got a round tip to it, but it's long. So those are the little leaves down in here. Make sure that I get them all the way down to the bottom here. Those highlights. A couple of those light, light ones. See how light, light there are areas, it's not always a white, but sometimes you might need to just put a little dab of that white in there to get a different green. Greens are tough, so just a little bit of green and I now have some more definition here. Go back over in here next to the bike. If all this area in here needs to be grassed in, I'll just stain it with the leftover paint on my palette. Green. And I can see a lot of it because the spokes are in there. But I know it's gonna be green behind me. Some black too, so maybe some of the blue. I can use this pile here to direct my leaves. And it's almost like I have a spot for mixing. When I'm out in the field, per se, if I'm painting outside, sometimes it's easier to take an area like this and to move the paint around than it is to actually carry a palette with me. This works with my board, sort of like a sculpture. I like to sculpt. It's not much different than clay. Just thinking in different terms or seeing in different shapes. to record the shapes that you see is important and that's just practice. People need to practice to see things differently. That's why people like our art because we're really different. We get, we see things differently. More in depth, more emotion. area is very light. I might need a white even to portray it. Portray it. Painting is like telling a story. I 
to decide when you're working on your composition what is the story that you're trying to tell. I'm trying to tell you there's little fluffy little hinds back here. There's some maple leaves, some oak trees, and there's a bicycle in the garden leaning up against the tree. So this is my garden bicycle. I'll post it later so that you guys can see the finished piece. important when you're making the name. It's usually about an inch up and an inch over. And I use the initials L. So I'm using my finger as a guide. It's also helping me keep my hands steady. See? Fifteen minutes. Alright, so I have fifteen minutes left. I'm going to work on some more of my defining lines. I'm looking for defining lines now because I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have with it. I'm going to make sure I can tell the story of these leaves that are hanging over here. And make them hang over and give them some direction. And then back in there, it's all those firs. Over the green and the blues. You can lighten the area, show some of the lighting. Fluffy trees. So I think it's time to switch to a different brush. Now I'm gonna fill in some this area here pounce. It's very far in the distance, so you might not be able to see too much of it, so fog it in there somehow with a larger brush. And there's some dark colors in there too, so I want to make sure I leave some of that dark area. Bring some light and dark. Move it around from side to side to paint. demonstrate this story that I'm telling you about the leaves and the trees and the bicycle and the garden. <coughs> garden bicycle. see the bottom color is dry enough now that I can just add a little bit of the light and start to add to that. Let me throw some in here. Down there my tires. Remember back here it's a lot lighter. It's 
further away behind the lake will be further away I put the color up there earlier and I'm just going to come to the room Showing through to show some sky. Just a little, a little leaves on top. Give it some dimension, maybe a little different than the photograph because it's a painting. I have to give it a little more pop, a little more pizzazz, maybe some more definition to tell a deeper story or something. See the little cranberry in the background, kind of remain just a little bit of that. Draw your eye back there. I hope. There's some leaves here on the ground or the grass. But mostly I see dirt coming through from the soil. Some good different shades. The grass gets a little bit warmer when it gets closer and cooler further behind. I was done with basic shapes, triangles. I can keep doing them and doing them, practice. This could be painted with a palette knife. It'd be actually pretty with a palette knife. So I'm probably in my fourth layer of light here. Going around. Trying to give it some real depth. So I hope you guys enjoy the weather today. It's beautiful out. You know, this is my garden. I hope you have a beautiful garden. And if you don't, you know, look it up online. Maybe go for a walk outside. Fresh air. Just keep looking for little shapes and layering. And I'll continue to do this for the next couple of hours. So I need some new definition in here. See those leaves. I won't show you the little maybe it's a bird's nest in there. Just a little peep hole here. As I go up on layers, it gets a little thicker and it's harder to work. I have to touch the brush to it extremely light because I don't want to blend in my colors. I want to just add color to it. You just see it's starting to shape. going lighter every layer. Here I'm going to go real light just so you can see it before we leave. I would normally go a little slower on the lights, but today this will help you see it better. The camera. I hope you all enjoyed this and if you're interested in more please contact me. I love to paint with friends. Thank you.
So, so far I've built this like a cake. I'm not ready for the frosting yet, but I've got all the mixture in here and uh, you can see it's starting to take shape and now it's got to rise and pop. So, um, happy painting and uh, I hope you all enjoyed today's painting. Please check back for me from time to time. You can go to artistlaurasenadella.com, artistlaurasenadella at gmail.com. Happy day.